السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كل عام وأنتم جميعا بخير رمضان كريم أسأل الله عظيم أن يتقبل منكم صيامكم وصلاتكم وأن يجعل هذا الشهر الكريم في ميزان حسناتكم رمضان مبارك ما أقدر أنظف أسنان ولدي لأن عنده هيموفيليا علشان لثته تنزف I cannot clean my child's teeth because it bleeds أخاف أروح طبيب الأسنان لأنه ما يعرف حالة ولدي وإذا عرف ما يعالجني I fear going to the dentist because he does not know my child's medical condition and if he knows he will not treat me سن ولدي اللبن اللي عمره ستة سنوات اللي تحت يتحرك وفي شوي دم إيش أسوي؟ The baby tooth of my six-year-old boy is moving and there is little blood. What should I do? مخاوف حقيقية للأشخاص الذين يعانون من اضطرابات النزيف الوراثية. Concerns that are real for people with bleeding disorders. I would like to thank uh, Saudi Society of Pediatric Dentistry for inviting me to moderate a session that's close to my heart and timing is in accordance to the Hemophilia Awareness Day, World Hemophilia Awareness Day, which was in April 17th. The title of our presentation is How to Manage a Child with Bleeding Disorder and Dental Considerations in Management of Pediatric Patients with Bleeding Disorders. And to introduce the first of our two distinguished speakers, Dr. Arwa Yamani. I asked Dr. Arwa, how should I introduce her? She, she just humbly said, just Arwa. So I'll just try to give you a little bit about uh, Dr. Arwa. Uh, she has been awarded the ideal and top student in intermediate school. After that, she finished her medical school and residency in pediatrics in Saudi Arabia, and then obtained a complete fellowship in hematology, oncology, and bone marrow transplant at the Hospital of Sick Kids in Toronto, Canada. After that, she came back to Saudi Arabia, and after serving many years, she's already a consultant pediatric hematology oncology bone marrow transplant at uh, and um, um, and uh, deputy chair oncology quality and patient safety at princess noura oncology center king abdulaziz medical city ministry of national guard health affairs please uh, join me to welcome dr yamani for her uh, presentation thank you dr yamani floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Zikra Al Khayal, one of our beloved and distinguished uh, pediatric dentists that we have been dealing with for many years and joining each other hand to hand and shoulder to shoulder via our path of uh, educational materials for the pediatric and hematologist. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, today with uh, my beloved uh departments uh, which are the dentists and the especially the pediatric dental uh, uh area that they're working with uh so uh, uh i would love uh, to thank you and i would love to start today uh talking about the basics and then we will be building up our uh knowledge about the bleeding disorders and having our um basic understanding to know how we can manage these cases so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in So to start uh, talking about the bleeding disorder and hemostasis in the uh, patients we need to know and understand how is the bleeding uh, controlled in the human body Bleeding or hemostasis, the balance between the bleeding and the resolution of the clot, goes into four stages. The first stage, which is the vascular phase, followed by the platelet phase, coagulation phase, and last is the fibrinolytic phase. So we will go through them one by one. The first phase, which is the vascular uh, phase, it's when we get injured, the first thing, the first response the body goes through is the contraction of the blood vessels, or what we call it, the vasoconstriction results. That's why sometimes when a person is bleed, the first thing we tell them, if for example, in an accident, 
tourniquet the limp or tourniquet the, par the part that is bleeding. It happens spontaneously internally. Second, we have the platelet phase. What is exactly the platelet phase? When we have the first phase of the vascular phase, the body sends signals for the platelets to come to the area that is injured to cause the platelet deposition in that area to make a plug for, we call it the platelet plug to control that area of the bleed. The platelets adhere to the damaged surface and form a temporary plug. Next, please. Yeah. So the third phase is the coagulation phase. What is the coagulation phase? The coagulation phase is when the platelet phase is done, the coagulation factor starts to come one by one to that area to deposit the fibrin, which is one of the most important mesh works that goes onto the platelet plug to form the mesh of the full clot and to make it stabilized. Next, please. So through the two separate pathways in the coagulation, we have the conversation of the fibrinogen into the fibrogen, fibrin to be completed. Next, please. Next. If we come to the fibrinolytic phase, what is exactly the fibrinolytic phase? If we continue having a, uh, the, 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 the plug and the mesh, what will happen? We will have a clot and then we will have like more propagation of the clot. When the lesion is closed, we go into the other balance of the coagulation where we break down this clot and it's called the fibrinolytic phase. So, the fibrinolytic phase is an anti-clotting mechanism and it's activated and allowed clot disintegration and repair of the damaged vessel. Hemostasis, as we can see, depends on multiple things. The vessel wall integrity, your adequate number of your platelets, not just the number, you have to have a proper function of the platelets. You have to have adequate levels of the clotting factors and the proper function of the fibrinolytic pathways. As we can see from this next slide, we have an intrinsic pathway and an extrinsic pathways. This is done initially on the graphs, but in real life, they happen together. They go hand by hand. The intrinsic pathways starts when we have an external injury to the vessel. When we have the external injury to the vessel, the platelets come down and they stimulate, as we said, the coagulation factors. It starts by 12, 11, and then we have 9 and 8. These are in the intrinsic factors pathway. And then in the extrinsic pathway, we have mainly the tissue thromboplastin. Both activate factor 10. Factor 10 via factor 5 uh, stimulate the prothrombin to go into the thrombin, which produces the fibrinogen into fibrin. I don't need you to know all of that. I need you to know which part is responsible for your PT and your PTT as we're coming down to the next slide with the laboratory evaluation. The laboratory evaluation, the first thing we need to know is the platelet count. So is the count okay or not? And then we need to know the prothrombin time. The prothrombin time is responsible for the extrinsic pathway. The partial thromboplastin time, which has all the intrinsic factors in it, okay? Please remember this because we will be asking you down the road about it. Then you have the thrombin time. Before, it's an obsolete test. More than 50 years ago, we had something called the bleeding time. The bleeding time is a very aggressive uh, test where we put a tourniquet in the patient arms. It's like when you measure the blood pressure and then they bring the scalpel and they produce a scar in the skin, in the forearm around one to two centimeters. 
two to three millimeter in depth and they start counting how many minutes does this bleeding go and that was the bleeding time this is in a very aggressive and it's not accurate because it depends on the operator so there's a the new test that we call the pfa 100 which is the uh, platelet function test and it tells us the bleeding time actually and it reflects the function of the platelet that the number if the patient have a normal uh, platelet counts normal pt norm uh, abnormal ptt we do something called the mixing study what is the mixing study where we bring the patient plasma mix it with the normal human uh, plasma if it corrects and the partial thromboplastin time goes to normal it means we have a factor sa that was fixed by the normal plasma that we transferred if it does not fix the mixing study the issue it means we have inhibitors that there is an inhibitor in this uh plasma and then we do the inhibitor assay to know how much is the concentration and the factor assay is where we measure the factors out of 100 if it's normal or not let's go to our next slide and understand what's the platelets issue the platelets, the normal platelets, it's between 150,000 to 450. Anything less than 100, we call it thrombocytopenia. The patient can have a mild thrombocytopenia, which where the platelets is more than 50. And this does not interfere with the surgical procedures that you need to do with your patient. 50 is an, a good number we can go with. But if the patient is having a severe low platelets which is less than 50 the risk is ble of bleeding is there and we have to consider more uh, treatment options if we come to the prothrombin time as we mentioned it measures the effectiveness of the extrinsic pathway next slide please your normal values is between 10 and 15 seconds and that's the normal remember this because we're going to be asking you in the coming quizzes when we come, as I mentioned before, the partial thromboplastin time, it measures your effectiveness of the intrinsic pathways and it's between 25 to 40 seconds. What about the thrombin time? The thrombin time, it's the time you convert the thrombin, the fibrinogen into the fibrin and it measures, it's a measure of your fibrinolytic pathways, it's between 9 and 13. Let's see this again in the next slide, the clotic mechanism. So you can see now where do you measure your PTT in the clotting mechanism? In slide the Libada, Dr. Arim, please. There you can see in the intrinsic factors, you can see the PTT in the extrinsic, you have the PT and the thrombin time is where you have your fibrinogen into fibrin uh, development. Okay, so let's now talk about what causes of bleeding disorder that can be in the vessels defect. We, you said, Dr. Arwa, that there's a lot of problems. It starts with the vessel defect. Next slide, Dr. Ali. So the vessel uh, defects, as we can see in the next uh, slide, it depends on different issues. Vitamin C deficiency. The Kuntus Mertu Zaman and Marad al Nakris, Ali Khan, Biji, Columbus, we al 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 Bahar Ali Khanu Maa when they came from America to Ras al Raja al Salih, they were having bleeding with aqruhat fi al fum, and that was because they didn't have any vitamin C. They were on very long time on the road, and they didn't carry any oranges with them or lemons. بعد ها تعلموا يبدأوا يشيلوا برتقال وليمون معاهم في الرحلات البحرية لما اكتشفوا that the bleeding is because of vitamin D deficiency. Other thing causes a bleeding, bacterial and viral infections. Uh, you as dentists, you can see sometimes bleeding in the, gum, in the gums when the patient have herpetic stomatitis, for example, or bacterial infections. The gum bleeds. Why does it bleed? Because you have vessel damage because of this infection. But there is some other acquired problems that happen to the vessels. Let's see next slide. The next slide tells us that the platelet disorder. So what do we have exactly in the platelet disorder as we can see the next slide? As we said, either the number or the function. So if you see that you have an abnormal 
platelet this uh, a platelet uh, abnormal platelet counts uh, you have the answer but if you have a normal platelet counts had a myamna and the function is not normal so in the next slide we say the thrombocytopenia which means the inadequate number of the platelets and in the other slide we say thrombocytopathy meaning you have adequate number but you don't have an a normal function but did you mean age exactly as a dentist, this is the most you will see. Number one, one of the main problems are the drug induced. Okay, what type of drug induced do we have? Drug induced either because as we can see next, it's either alcohol, patients who consume a big number of alcohol and they have liver problems. Number two are the medications. So what type of medications do we, do we have a problem in? We're going to mention in a few minutes. The, the number of the, uh, the platelets can be low because your bone marrow is failing. Bone marrow is failing like what? It can be because of viral infections. A patient, for example, have parvovirus infection, have CMV, have EPV viral infection. You can have a secondary to nutritional deficiencies, B12 deficiency, even severe iron deficiency anemia sometimes. If the patient is on chemotherapy and radiation therapy, most of you working in a tertiary centers, working with the chemotherapy patient, you know sometimes we ask for a procedure on a patient, for example, having a dental abscess, but the platelets is low because he's on chemotherapy. And then we have this discussion, so what should we do next? Sometimes you have an infiltrative of abnormal cells like the leukemias or the metastatic cancers that you can have. Have you heard about hypersplenism? What is hypersplenism? Hypersplenism is when you have an increase in size of your spleen leading to destruction of the platelets, like me in that patient with sickle cell disease, patients with thalassemias, patients with pyruvate kinase deficiencies, with serocytosis, all these hemoglobinopathies, which they go into hypersplenism, or liver cirrhosis, portal vein hypertension, all of this can lead to decreased number of platelets and destructions that you can see. Okay. Other causes that you can have is the immune thrombocytopenic purpura. I would like in Udaim and Akid Ma Ismaha idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. That was a very, very old name, idiopathic. Uh, idiopathic, what is the cause? The cause is immune, immune thrombocytopenic purpura, where you have antibodies. As a pediatric population, أكثر من الأدلت population and it's self uh, it is self recovery and resolves fast. Other patients that you can see with uh, platelet problems is patients with renal failures because they have uremia. Uremia decreases the platelet functions. ما تخليها تلتصق في بعضها and it makes the clot. You have some inherited disorders. Inherited disorders like whom? Like Glanzmann thrombasthenia. This is one of the things that you can see, Bernard Soulier syndromes, and others like uh, drugs. I want to talk about two drugs that you can see mainly as a dentist, and you need to ask the patients about them. Because when they come to you, they're already in pain because of a dental abscess or dental caries or a problem that is going on. يا إما أسبرين يا إنسيتس. The aspirins ما بتشوفوها في الأطفال. You see it mainly in the adults because it's like some people more than 40 with high cholesterol with multiple problems. They are on aspirin. الأسبرين أبغاكم تفتكروا شيء. It's an irreversible drug that binds to your platelets for a lifespan of seven to ten days. فلو جاييني مريض اليوم هو كان على aspirin and I want to do a procedure. And I fixed him today. Remember that he have a risk of bleeding up to ten days after your 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 procedure, even if you stop the aspirin, because it is irreversibly binded to your platelets. 
بعكس السلايد اللي بعدها اللي بتقول لي الانسيدز الانسيدز زي الفولترين البروفينز ايبروفينز ذيس ريفرسيبلي بايندز تو ذا بليتلت فور ا ليميتد تايم بيريد ابروكسيمتلي 6 اورز يعني لو جاك المريض الان وقال لك والله انا دوبي اخذ لايك البروفين فروم فيو اورز وزيرو ستوب اند يو ديد ذا بروسيجر هي از نوت ات ا ريسك اوف بليد واي بيكوز اتس ايرفرسيبل So I want you to remember this very well, and when your patient come, please ask them about their drug uses. Okay, we finish from the platelets. What about the factor deficiencies? The factor deficiencies are do aglato. You have a lot of factor deficiencies, but as a, a, a dentist, what you need to know is the three main problems: hemophilia A, which is factor eight deficiency; hemophilia B. which is factor 9 deficiency and the von Willebrand disease which is the most common disorder you will see in the world although a lot of patients are asymptomatic but when you do a procedure you will realize they're bleeding more than the others uh, post procedure for a long period of time طب خلينا نرجع للسلايد اللي بعده ونتكلم about the hemophilia A hemophilia A we call it the classic hemophilia تمام؟ ليه سموها A؟ because هي اللي اكتشفوها قبل ال B وقبل ال C. Um, 80 to 85% of all hemophiliacs are hemophilia A. Remember hemophilia A حتشوفوها more in the boys, more in the males because it is X-linked. So when you take the history, you will ask the mother if she have any one of her brothers or uncles with hemophilia. not the father though it can happen to a very lesser extent to the female من الاشياء اللي i need you to to know it very well we will be going through our quizzes the deficiency of factor 8 we divide it to mild moderate severe each one of them have a different management which is like we can answer you in the question and answers uh, session i will not burden you with them too much information here The only information I want you to go out with is that in the mild cases, we can give them just a DDAVP. We don't need to do factor replacement. But in the moderate or the severe cases, um, uh, we, we need to give factor replacement. And in the lab results, Fakreen, Fengulna in factor eight, it's in the intrinsic pathways. So we will see a prolonged partial thromboplastin time. What about hemophilia B? Hemophilia B, we call it Christmas disease. Christmas is not like the Christmas. It's Christmas. It's the family name of the doctor who discovered the uh, this factor deficiency, which is factor nine deficiency. It's an autosomal recessive disorder. So you'll see it in males and females. It accounts to 10 to 15% of all hemophilia. And it's iodine موجود in the intrinsic pathways, so you will find the prolonged partial thromboplastin time. And the severity, as we can see, it resembles the factor 8 deficiency exactly in the classification of the severe, moderate, and mild as the slide after this. Okay. I want you to see these images. The acute complications of hemophilia. How would you know, the next slide kindly, that the patient is having a hemophilia? Usually when the patient comes to you, either you are the first person who discovered he has a hemophilia because the first presentation is the bleeding from his uh, mouth, or you will find the patient with such presentations, as you can see, or you can see complications. What is these pictures? The picture on the right shows A normal left knee and the right knee, you can see that there's a minor trauma there, which happens to most of your kids when they ride a bicycle or they run or they play or they go to school. And with a minor trauma, there is a bleed that happens inside the joint, which we call heme arthrosis. And you can see this acutely that the patient presents with. So when you ask the patient for the history, one of the things that you need to ask him if there is any element of joint bleeds. So is it only joint bleeds? Not really. Look at the picture to the left side. The patient may present with this type of what we call pseudotumor. The patient presents with a big muscle, hot, tender, uh, irregular, very giant, 
And this is because of a bleed inside of the muscles, not the joints. We call it a pseudotumor because you rarely see this. And when they present to the emergency room, they think that they have a tumor, but actually it's just a hematoma. One of the things that I need to tell you is that we never, never do aspiration to these patients when they come with the bleed. We give them factor replacement because they are in a tamponade with this bleed. So what you give is factor deficiency. You never insert a needle in a joint or in a bleed with, for a hemophiliac. So let's see the factor deficiency in the next slide. Dr. Erwin Tigulti, von Willebrand disease. Von Willebrand disease, believe it or not, it's number one uh, type of highest prevalence in the world for uh, bleed. Uh, a lot of people don't know they even have it and they die and they don't know even they have it. It presents like with a minor uh, bleeds like prolonged menstrual cycle or sometimes with a minor epistaxis or sometimes, believe it or not, they go even to an open heart surgery and they don't have a bleed. You just discover it on the laboratory, but there is no clinical bleed. So it's a big variation, the von Willebrand disease. It's related to the deficiency of the von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor, this is the protein which carries the factor eight on it. It's the carriage for the factor eight. You have three types with different severities. Uh, but we can answer you if you need to know more about it. The lab results usually we see a prolonged partial thromboplastin time. هو السيارة اللي بتحمل الفاكتور 8. So wherever the factor 8, you will see the von Willebrand. So it is in the intrinsic pathway. Okay. What, so what causes bleeding disorder? إيش the other causes that we, we missed or we, we, we didn't say? فاكرين لما نحن دائما نقول أي مريض لشان توصلوا لأي علاج appropriate, you have to have a good history that you ask the patient. One of the important histories that you need to ask your patient is the oral anticoagulants or the medications like warfarin and heparin because you might miss that part. If the patient is having liver diseases, tablish liver diseases, because most of the uh, liver uh, produces our coagulation factors. Patients who have malabsorption syndromes for a reason or another, like celiac diseases or short bowel syndromes or any other problems in their gut and do the damp or anything, they have factor deficiencies because of the low vitamin K. And the patients on broad spectrum antibiotic, after sicklers, these sicklers for the first five years of their life, they're on penicillin every day. This penicillin can decrease their vitamin K لأنها بتقلل البكتيريا اللي موجودة في الأمعاء اللي بتنتج لي الفاكتور اللي هو فاكتور دي 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 فيتامين كي سوري the vitamin K in the uh, intestine so ask if your patient is on broad spectrum antibiotic المرضى اللي بيجوكم اللي هم عندهم chronic heart diseases they are on a prolonged uh, antibiotics the patient who have uh, sickle cell disease they're on prolonged antibiotic they're at risk of bleeding per se طيب نيجي نتكلم على الاورال انتيكواغلانس just remember that the warfarin prevents your thromboembolic events and it is vitamin K antagonist and it is monitored by the prothrombin time uh, and the heparin is monitored by the PTT time لانه هو بيأثر directly على الفاكتورز اللي موجودة عندي في الانترنسيك pathways Malabsorption, there's various intestinal diseases that can cause these uh, malabsorption. And remember vitamin K uh, deficiency or vitamin K dependent coagulation factor. And I'm going to say that it's 1972, factor 10, factor 9, factor 7, and factor 2. 1972. Okay. Liver diseases. Liver diseases at Kalamna Liver diseases uh, can affect both the extrinsic and the intrinsic pathways. Uh, broad spectrum antibiotics at Kalamna Annahum. This is the dental evaluation. We send you a patient who needs uh, 
a dental evaluation, let's say from the hematology clinic, the oncology clinic, or from the general pediatric even clinic. Uh, next slide, please, Dr. Ali. So one of the main things that you need to know about, the first thing you asked, uh, next, next, dental evaluation, please. Thank you. Is the good thorough medical history. A good physician, a good dentist is the one who anticipates the problem, is the one who knows the thorough medical history. Don't just seat the patient in the seat and start working in his mouth without taking a good thorough medical history. You need to do a good physical examination for your patient before you start. You need to do the screening clinical lab test before you take any action on the patient teeth, especially if you have something suspicious in his medical history. And excessive bleeding following surgical uh, procedures need to be uh, taken care of uh, like in a very important matter. So as we can see from the next slide, what does a good thorough history mean? A family history. Ask if the patient is having any family member with a bleeding disorder. أحياناً أهالي يخبوا. فلا تقول لهم إنه آه في أحد في العائلة عنده أي نزيف. يقول لا والله ما عندي أحد. Ask them indirect question. Any one of the family members from both. أحياناً بيأخذوها offended لما بتسأل الأم عندك أحد أنت طالع في زوجها طب أنت ما سألته هو because they don't know what are you asking about. Ask both of them at the same time if anyone in their families have a bleeding disorder or احتاج انه يتنقل له دم او صفائح في اي وقت من عمره او انه اتنوم بسبب نزيف في المفاصل. This is very important. Uh, ask about their personal history. اذا المريض هذا حصل له اي نزيف، اي رعاف قبل كده، اي كدمات، اي خبطات اكثر من اللازم حصلت له. Especially when, when the patient is for the first time you see him. Medications. Ask very importantly about all the medications the patient is asking. Ulatis tinsu tisalu about the medications that over the shelf. This is important. Past and present illnesses that the patient have and spontaneous uh, bleeding. Uh, to tell you about uh, a, a story which is, I consider it a bit sad story that it has been missed and the, the, a good dentist could have picked it up very early. I had a patient last month who was uh, eight months of, uh, eight years, sorry, of age, uh, a very uh, good educated mother. Uh, he is the second child out of four children she had and she realized that he's having continuous lower jaw pain and it was not normal for her he already have uh, his teeth there is no erupting teeth there is nothing there so she took him to a dentist in one of the uh, 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 i'm not sure where she she took him but i think it was a primary uh, health uh, clinic and she told him my child is having uh, jaw pain so he examined the patient. He didn't find anything. So he told her, oh, most probably he's going to have an abscess uh, in his jaw. I can see there's some tenderness. Give him antibiotic for eight days. So they gave him Ogbentin, eight days, no response. The pain is increasing. She went back because the patient is having more jaw pain and more uh, pain in his face, mainly in the maxilla. So the doctor at this time, Admara had a dentist, family physician. He did the CBC for her. They found the platelet is low. Uh, it was around 75 at that time. Normal white blood cells, hemoglobin is around 11. And uh, they said, like, we can't find anything uh, there. Yani, just halas, go home. Maybe he's having some uh, problems like a viral ITP go to a general uh, pediatrician to see him. He went to a general pediatrician. The general pediatrician cleared him out. And then uh, two weeks later, he presented uh, to us in the emergency department. He's a Burkitt's lymphoma with metastasis, total destruction of the left jaw, jaw total destruction of his maxilla, total destruction of his orbital uh, bone, tumor extended to the base of the skull, and uh, it was a very messy. He had Burkitt's lymphoma everywhere in his body. I think the patient could, ha could have been picked up early by the, by the first dentist who had examined him when he did not find anything in his jaw with a low platelets, 
and perhaps he could have thoroughly examined him or at least he have uh, uh, he have done like a panoramic uh, x-ray or something that he might need it. he could have picked up the patient very much early before the patient had all of this metastasis so this is just to remember please always look beyond beyond just uh, what you see and i know you are all one of the great peoples around here um okay so what do you need to know to review patient medications? As you can see from the next slide, I need you please to remember five of these drugs. Don't forget them. Aspirin, anticoagulants, which are the heparin and warfarin, antibiotics, alcohol, and especially in the elderly, and uh, anti-cancer medications and tumors. So oral manifestations, yeah. what do you see oral manifestations that you can think that this patient عنده risk of bleeding أكثر من غيره من اللي انتو بتشوفوهم دائما إذا لقيتوا والله بداخل فمه a lot of PTKI and ecchymosis أكثر من المعتاد اللي انتو متوقعين أنكم تشوفوه Patient with gingival hyperplasia, what does it mean gingival hyperplasia? Acute myeloid leukemia, the first presentation comes to us from the dentist بيقول لك والله المريض هذا عنده gingival hyperplasia غريبة the first presentation of acute myeloid leukemia a patient have spontaneous gingival bleed انت يا دوبك تمسك وبتحط like your, your test on it patient start bleeding from his gum this is not normal for a child ulceration of the oral mucosas and lymphadenopathy yeah the patient I told you about the one who had jaw pain he had a, a lot of cervical lymphadenopathy from his pre first presentation to the dentist شوفوا لي السلايد اللي بعدها. This how would a leukemia look like? Gingival hypertrophy plus these white leukopenia patches in the uh, mouth, leukoplakia, sorry, patches in the mouth. This is a presentation of the acute myeloid leukemias. طيب اوكي. Okay. عندنا مريض انا شابكه فيه. What's my next issue? ايش ايش المشكله؟ عندكم حاجتين، انت الان in your clinic. عامل المريض as a low risk patient ولا a moderate risk ولا a high risk طيب مين ال low risk low risk patient ما عنده أي history of bleeding disorders تماما ولا laboratory test normal تماما ما عندكم إيش هذا low risk patient يمشي زي ما يمشي بقية المرضى اللي أنتم بتتعاملوا معاهم on a daily routine basis نيجي لل moderate risk والله عندي مريض محطوط على chronic oral anticoagulant hmm. هنا وقف شوية لو عندك ال PT اللي يتابع لل extrinsic pathway 1.5 to 2 times the control range هدول بالذات لما يكونوا مثلا على الوارفرين هدول نهدي ما نلعب معاهم نوقف الوارفرين نعمل our dental procedure وبعدين نكمل الوارفرين بعد ال dental procedure بعدين patients on chronic aspirin therapy دولة مجموعة ال moderate risk طيب نجي لل high risk مين عندكم ال high risk الهاي ريسك هنا بنوقف عندها بشوية لأنه دولة قنبلة موقوتة الهاي ريسك بيشنت هم البيشنت with a known bleeding disorder واحد already labeled عنده bleeding disorder والبيشنت هذا without known bleeding disorder لكن عنده abnormal laboratory result معناه انت حتكون أول واحد حتكتشف أنه this patient عنده a bleeding disorder so either known أو دوبك حتى تعرف إنه عنده a bleeding uh, problem. طيب إيش ال dental management؟ dental management لو هو low risk patient هذا your normal protocol as per your uh, hospital. Uh, السلايد اللي قبلها دكتورة. moderate risk patients اللي هم على ال anticoagulants وال aspirin therapy please consult a physician before you touch him to save yourself and to save the patient. And to be uh, in a safe environment when you work, you have your back up from the hematologist. طيب نجي للhigh risk. The high risk دولة عاد ما فيهم لعب. اللي هي في السلايد الثانية. The high risk patient دول الأغلب نفضل إنهم يكونوا hospitalized. Uh, our uh, dentist in our hospital, they know these patients, ما بيلعبوا فيهم. They call us immediately, please clear out the patient. إحنا حنعمل له admission أو إنتوا عملوا له admission. Clear him out, fix him, and we can take him to the OR. طبعاً أول شيء لازم الهيماتولوجيست هيماتولوجيست to be involved. لأن المسألة ما هي عملية إني أنا حشتغل على أسنانه وحطلعه as a day case home. No. These patients, they need 
management before the OR, during the OR, and after the OR. Uh, there was one patient, uh, I don't know if Dr. Ayman Nuh is with us here, we were managing one of our patients where he had hemophilia A, uh, the procedure done, uh, finished, sent home, the hematologist was involved, assuming that the patient was okay, patient discharged home, came after, I think, 8 or 12 hours post-operative with a hemoglobin of 4 to the emergency room. He bled massively from his mouth from a, a, a minor uh, dental rehabilitation for the child. Why? Because factor 8 deficiency, when we have the mesh that is the clot, تكون فرايبل كلوت فانت تنبسط وانت شغال انه خلاص يو يو هاف نورمال هيموستاسيس يو دونت سي اني بليدنج ان فرونت اوف يور اي وايل يور اون ذا او ار بتطلع المريض الكلوت الصغيره دي اللي فورم تتفك لانه ما في فاكتور 8 ريبليسمنت بيشنت هاف تو بي ادميتد انه ياخذ فاكتور 8 ريبليسمنت على الاقل 24 الى 48 اورز بوست اوبريتيف ذاتس واي وي سي بيشنت هاف تو بي هوسبيتاليزد ويز ا مالتي Uh, approach multiple team involved in these patients. طبعا بعض المرضى يحتاجوا platelet transfusions زي مين؟ زي الجلانسمان ثرومبستينيا مثلا. يعني ناس يحتاجوا factor replacement زي مين؟ زي الهيموفيليك. بعض المرضى يحتاجوا فيتامين كي ثيرابي مثلا عندهم liver cirrhosis او dialysis زي اللي عندهم uh, uremia. ف every patient is having a different management. طيب نجي uh, للgeneral measures. What do I need? as a, a dentist to know how to manage these patients. أول شيء دائماً الوقاية أفضل من العلاج. دائماً ننصح as a hematologist and as a dentist our patients أول شيء good oral hygiene. لا تستن... لا أجي... لا تجيني with a dental caries and dental abscess. من البداية good oral hygiene and this what we يعني instruct them one, two, three is good oral hygiene. Number two, twice a day brushing with a soft texture brush, not a medium or a hard uh, texture, with a soft texture brush. The patients, when we do post-extractions for a dental caries, for example, we need to eat a diet constituting mainly of liquids, which are cold, like jellos and so on, which are minced solids, so that we don't have any water and should be consumed for 5 to 10 days post extractions بلاش الشابوره وبلاش الشيبس والاشياء اللي بتجرح الفم طبعا ان ادلت سموكينج شود بي افويدد دائما ننصح انه اني بيشنت ويز بليدنج ديس اوردرز لازم ارسله فور ذا ماي دنتست افري 3 تو 6 مانث فور تشيك اب وي نيد تو دو بروتكشن اوف سوفت تيشوز ديورينج ريستوراتيف ثيرابي ذات يو دو فور ذيس بيشنت نيجي للنيرف بلوكس which we will be talking about it in our quizzes تعملوا نيرف بلوكس ولا ما بتعملوا؟ تحتاجوا نيرف بلوكس ولا ما بتعملوا؟ انت قاعده بتقولي لي ده المريض قاعد ينزف طيب اعطيه ولا ما اعطيه؟ يس. نيرف بلوكس ار نوت كونترا انديكيتد بس بروفايدد ذات ساتيسفاكتوري فاكتور ليفلز ار اشيفد. فهذه من الدسكشن اللي تتم بين الهيماتولوجيست والدنتست قبل ما نبدا انه تقول له ترى انا ححتاج انه اعمل له نيرف بلوك. أنا هحتاج أعمل له كذا 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 عشان كده most of the doctors especially in the pediatric population prefer to take the patients into a general anesthesia ما تحتاج نيرف بلوك you clean him off ويخرج نظيف وجاهز من الأشياء اللي نحتاجها كمان اللي هي الكلوروهيكسيدين and povidine mouthwashes that may be used uh, pre and post dental workup طيب last but not least what other things do I need for these patients And next uh, page, please. تحتاج وقت العمليات أو وقت ال procedures that you give something topical. Topical, the thrombin soaks can be used as a local hemostatic agent, antifibrinolytic agents. لأن أنت الآن تبغى تحط more fibrin, more fibrin, and you overcome and you're okay. عندي factor eight deficiency, factor nine. اللي هو أبغى أوصل للنتيجة الأخيرة إني أحط أكثر. فايبرين وفي نفس الوقت اعطي انتي فايبرينوليتيك انه لا تيجي تتكسر الفايبرين كلوت uh, هذه اللي موجوده عندي اند ذا فايبرين جلو ان سيفير كيسز مريض جاك ما عندك وقت جاء وذا كار اكسيدنت وجهه متهرشم اند يو نيد تو ورك سمثينج ان هيز ماوث عنده اسنان طايحه وداخله مكسره وانسى وحالته حاله يو نيد تو جيف هيم ما عندك وقت انك تعطي 
while you are giving the factors ممكن تعطيله اللي هو recombinant factor 7 factor 7 لو واحد عنده انت جايك ما تعرف هو عنده intrinsic ولا extrinsic باتري ما تعرف عنده هيموفيليا ولا عنده ما تعرف جاء أهل جاء جد جاء عم قال لك والله ترى هذا الولد عنده نزيف you don't know what you have you either can give him plasma or you can give him recombinant factor 7 with like the hematologist to be involved in this سامحوني أنا مرة طولت عليكم my cam is not working فأنتوا قاعدين طفشتكم بصوتي حنيجي للكويز نمبر 1 أنا حاطة تو كويزز حنسأل الكويز الأول وأشوف how much did you grasp Uh, حنعمل بول البول عندكم لمدة دقيقة واحدة تجاوبوا عندكم مريض عمره 18 شهر old patient known to have hemophilia A factor level of 12 تاكرين المستويات مال مودريت سيفير قلت لكم حسألكم فيها he's having a tooth eruption just a tooth eruption and a local oozing of blood what would you do as a management خلونا نشوف your polls عندكم دقيقة Would you give factor 8 replacement? Will you give recombinant factor 7? Or would you give local measures? Or you advise for admission and hematology consultation? يلا عندكم دقيقة دخلوا ال polls please نشوف مين كان مركز في المحاضر يا سلام عليكم يا سلام عليكم يا سلام عليكم اوكي سو ذا بول هير سيز 61% منكم جابوا الاجابه صحيحه فهذا الولد خلونا نفسرها هي 18 مانث ما حصل له بليدنج قبل كده بس معروف انه فاكتور اي الليفل 12% 12% معناها ايش قلنا مايلد لانها مور ذان 5% فهذا الولد عنده مايلد مايلد قلنا ممكن نعالجه باشياء بسيطه لو في بليد احنا بنتكلم هنا على انورمال ايروبشن واحد عنده سنه مخلخله وفي السنه الثانيه بتطلع ما عنده بليد ما عنده سيرجري يو ار نوت جونا دو سمثينج بروسيجر في ان 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 في لثته ففاكتور اي ريبليسمنت نو لانه هو مايلد فنحطيها في المودريت والسيفير فقط ريكومبيننت فاكتور 7 لا هذا اخر العلاج الكي وي دونت جيف ات في البدايه ادفايس فور ادميشن اند هيماتولوجي كونسلتيشن نو بيكوز ذس از سمثينج مايلد ما يحتاج ريبليسمنت يو سي ات ان ان يور ريجولار كلينيك يو جاست جيف لوكال ميجر اند يو فولو اب ذا بيشنت مره رائعه الاجابه شكرا لكم ندخل للسؤال الثاني Okay, I want you to see the picture. This is a five-year-old uh, boy, as you can see, beautiful child, healthy, mubtasim, relaxed, diagnosed with immune thrombocytopenic purpura. فالآن إحنا بنتكلم على platelet disorder. Patient referred by hematologist for dental care. Patient is partially cooperative and had a simple caries molar teeth as you can see from the image. We should show his values. His hemoglobin is 11. Okay. His hematocrit is normal. His white blood cells is 10. Platelets is 20. His PT is 16. APTT 30. And his INR is 1. Okay. شفتوا هذا الجدول نجي ل ال question دا 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 دا. <تصفيق> okay let's see the question please and we will have a poll so this boy what would be your next action would you discuss the possible dental restorative treatment options with a hematologist The need for replacement therapy, local control measures needed post-treatment for a few days. You will advise him just for a cool liquids already initially or all of the above. Let's see the poll. Atun al-ijabat, you have one minute.
اوكي اوكي جميل طيب خلينا نناقش what did you do الإجابة هي all of the above so 52% جاوبوا عليها this is good أساس إنه نعرف why did we base this option Uh, discuss the possible dental restorative treatment option with a hematologist. True, you should. Lay, because platelets less than 20. We said that 50 and above, it is safe for any dental procedure in the, the patient. Less than 50, it's a risk. This patient had 20. So we have to call the hematologist. The hematologist said, "Should we? What should we do with this patient? The need for replacement therapy? Yes, because we have to raise the platelet to 50." لازم I, I put it up يعني إذا you need to play around this restorative or this uh, uh, tooth and you might come near the gum and, and a bleed or whatever so you need a replacement therapy replacement therapy in the patient with immune ITP either steroid إذا تقدر تستنى على المريض for, for a week or إذا كان والله لا ما نقدر نستنى في مشكلة فظيعة ممكن أعطي له platelet transfusion or IVIG But usually we can defer for a week or two عبر ما نرفع البلاتلس. Local uh, control measures needed post-treatment for a few days? Yes. هذه الإجابة برضها صحيحة اللي جاوبوها 9%. Advice for cool liquids uh, orally initially, which usually زي ما قلنا لمعظم ال patients with bleeding disorder لازم نعطيهم حاجة تكون uh, باردة. حاجة تكون liquid, minced and cold for few days post-operative. فكل الإجابات هذه صحيحة. ديكم العافية. حنيجي لي a summary of our uh, lecture today. Uh, شكرا جزيلا لاستماعكم. اللي نبى نطلع فيها من our lecture. Uh, bleeding disorder can be congenital or acquired. يعني ممكن يكون عندك مريض سليم اصلا ما كان عمره عنده بليدنج بروبلم وفجاه جاي لك المريض وانت شكيت انه عنده بليدنج بروبلم لانه شايف عنده ايكيموزز اند ايزي بروزابيلتي في الماوث فريمبر ممكن كان واحد نورمال حيقلب اب نورمال فعندك انت يور هيستوري اند فيزيكال اكزامينيشن اند ابروبريت بلاد تيست از فيري امبورتنت ذا سكند ثينج Please remember that your patients are classified as low, intermediate, and high. Low, you go with your own protocol in your hospital. Intermediate and high risk, please involve the hematologist with you in this patient for his safety. Please consult the patient uh, and do not hesitate to consult the hematologist. Management depends on the underlying cause with the general measures like the local hemostatic measures and specific treatment as per disease involved. أشكركم شكر عميق على حسن الاستماع وسامحوني جدا على الإطالة. We can leave a few minutes for questions if you have. And uh, my email is in the last slide. Please, if you have any questions, you need any help, any advice about any protocol for your patient, please do not hesitate to contact me directly via my email. Thank you very much. Mike is with you. Shukran, Dr. Arwa, for an impressive presentation which talked about uh, uh, the whole bleeding uh, diathesis in great details, uh, both congenital and acquired. Uh, as Dr. Uh, Yamani, uh, before I introduce my second distinguished speaker, if you have any questions, you may actually write them and then uh, we can answer a few or we can continue and we can take all the questions at the end. So we will wait. Um, one or two questions. I'm sure she, uh, Dr. Arwa was very thorough. So maybe all your questions. Uh, while you're thinking about questions, I have a question for you, Dr. Arwa. Um, you mentioned, uh, of course, the message we heard that is health. History is very important, which is part of our pediatric uh, learning. Consultation is very important. Risk assessment of both the patient and the procedure. And close uh, liaison, liaison with the hematologist. 
Um, you mentioned about aspirin, Yani patients who come for us to aspirin, we, the newer guidelines now, we don't actually stop aspirin. So I kind of, and the other question also on warfarin, I don't know, I thought the PT, so we should rely on the PT, then not the INR. Um, but even the changes, you know, um, because we teach our students differently, especially when it comes to INR and uh, uh, aspirin. So please enlighten us with this, if no questions, actually. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, let's see the aspirin first. Um, طبعاً هي دائماً it's a risk assessment. We don't, we don't tell them. الصوت بيرجع لي دكتورة دكتورة. If you can close it from your side. Yeah, sure, and I close my. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. So, بالنسبة للأسبرين, it depends. طبعاً, طبعاً, we don't stop aspirin إذا هو حاجة vital for the patient. طبعاً, في ناس مثلاً بيأخذوها for pain. ف... وفي ناس بياخذوها لا لانه عندهم cardiac problems عندهم stents عندهم اشياء ثانيه which you do not stop وكل حاله بحاله we discuss it with their main uh, physician who started this aspirin واصلا ما حنقدر نوقف الاسبرين ونتوقع انه uh, خلاص I'm safe to do my procedure. You put in mind that there you will have platelet uh, dysfunction for the coming days for so you have to just uh, give him like more fibrinolytic therapy or you give him more time uh, for, for whatever local measures you want to give. This is for the aspirin. بالنسبة uh, للوارفرين, it depends. As I mentioned here, if you can see the slide when I said, when you give the warfarin, the patient is high, is high risk when it's between 1.5 and 2. And usually, sometimes we go with a higher level in some diseases, between 2 and 3. It depends from one case to the other and from procedure to the other. مثلا, I had a patient who had a massive uh, uh, stroke because of antithrombin 3 deficiency and he had a massive pulmonary embolism and a DVT on different timings and he's on a warfarin Ujani with a dental abscess and I need to fix this dental abscess. Um, the risk of stopping the warfarin is by far higher that the patient will go into a problem while he is doing the procedure. For what we will do, I will decrease my INR. While he goes to the surgery, then I will elevate it back up again and he will be in a very tight, close monitor with me in the hospital. Because of an old clot line related, not haja inherited, he's a high risk line related, can for a reason or another, shelter line, a risk factor, rah, but lazy me come a total of three months al warfarin. Ujay methalan now. Not with just a dental abscess, he has like a mass, massive problem in his jaw. Uh, you need to do a biopsy, you need to do something restorative, something really, really major. For a, a risk uh, of that the, the, he will have a problem from his dental problem by far akthar min my prophylaxis warfarin and who lazy me kamil the three months. For hina ana agdar awagifu, I can bridge with heparin while you finish. And then go back on the warfarin. The heparin is a shorter actor. Awal mahawagifu hayawagifu. The warfarin will stay for days, or I need an antidote fiha. Fahala bhala, we we do the the full uh, education aliha. Ma fi hala tishbah al thaniya tamaman. Mike for you, Dr. Adikri. Shukran, Dr. Adikri, al tawdeeh. Ana ma hatawil, bas at this. Um, uh, subject is very important to the difference between the, the dentist and the hematology in that sense in terms of the acceptance of the INR. As you said, it's a specific case. Leila, the important what we teach them is like up to 3.5, it's okay, according to the Scottish. This is now the understanding for dental procedures, especially when it comes on a routine basis or outpatient basis. So we'll t uh, I'm not going to take more time. There is a question. Doctor, you've mentioned the management of patients with factor deficiency, that cases with moderate and, and severe deficiency needs factor replacement. What about the mild cases? 
Uh, mild cases depends. Are we talking about factor A deficiency or factor 9 deficiency? Uh, factor A deficiency in the mild, no, we do not give the replacements. Uh, we can give only uh, DDVAP uh, intranasally before the patients go to the uh, procedure. It can elevate 30 to 50 percent of the factor percentage. Uh, in factor nine, uh, no, we don't give anything uh, locally in the in the mild cases. We give just local, nothing as a replacement. They can pass biha ID. They can go. Okay. Uh, thank you for this great presentation. I have a question, somehow not related to dental, but do you have any idea of the new medication Hemi Libra? Uh, are used here in yes. Saudi Arabia to yes. treat patients? Yes. Yeah. With hemophilia with, with inhibitors. The next question, I think the, the last one. Uh, a brilliant talk, Dr. Arwa. Could you please touch base on patients developing factors inhibitor and how to avoid it, especially in a child where quadrant dentistry treatment is required and factor covers four times it might increase the chances of inhibitor development. Many, many thanks. You're welcome. Thank you very much uh, for very this. Much, uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Inhibitors in any patient with hemophilia is a nightmare for the hematologist. Um, there's a lot of ways to treat. Let's uh, start in the beginning. Why does a patient with hemophilia have inhibitors? There's a lot, lot of causes. Liha, no al factor libitati. What's the doses? Uh, at what age it was started? At عطت as primary or secondary. وبعدين بعد كده بيعتمد على المستوى حق البثيستا تستينج. Like the inhibitors is how far? Mild, moderate, severe, very severe. How much? Uh, there is ways that we can overcome uh, uh, these inhibitors uh, either by changing the product itself, the one that you are giving, for example, if he's factor eight deficiency, or something we call immune therapy. We start doing immune therapy for these patients, or either by the Himibra, which uh, you were just asking about it. It's a new uh, medication uh, working uh, uh, as an immunological factor against the antibodies, uh, and there's a lot of studies that we're doing now and involved in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's a nightmare when you have a patient, honestly, with an uh, inhibitor. Thank you. I agree. Alhamdulillah, not many, thanks to the hematologist. One more question, actually. What is the difference between heparin and warfarin related to dental management, Dr. Uh, from dental management, yeah, from nothing. Dental management, nothing. Both of them uh, increase your uh, bleeding tendency. Um, uh, it depends only for the management uh, point of view. And warfarin is a longer acting. Uh, if you stop it now, the action will be still there for three to five days. The heparin, as soon as you stop it, uh, the fractionated the effect has to go immediately. Uh, the warfarin have a lot of interactions with food, especially children, milk, uh, green uh, leaves, uh, red meats, uh, ginger, a lot of things. There is a lot of food restriction. Maybe the patient will be able to get a good level, but before they come to you, they will be able to drink something like zanjabil, play moon or something. If you come to another day, you will find the world clean from everywhere because it increases the bleeding uh, tendency. Besides the heparin, because it gives you uh, subcutaneously, the uh, level to be maintained and it doesn't affect the food. It's important for you as a dentist to know so that you know the level. What level uh, at Amal and Maridu can normal Akhir Mara? Mumkin you can have a word for him, but my Amal level in Sitta Sabashur. If I had the Gabriel Matim, so could I mean low level? Then Mumkin you can have a level very high. Uh, the same thing for the hipparin. Uh, like in, as a dentist, who interpreted Shtagal Ali, my frig mark which uh, product is he on? Yani physically on the patient. So the procedure ma hayghayr alik shay. It's the same procedure as a dentist you would be doing. Okay, 
اوكي شكرا كثير دكتور عروة فانتاستيك بيرسون بيفور اي انتروديوس ماي نيكست ديستنجوش سبيكر I think it's very important uh, to to realize this: uh, the patients with bleeding disorders are uh, considered moderate risk, even if there are no caries. So the uh, caries management uh, pathway should be every three months we see them, and the uh, preventive home uh, aspect is very important to start uh, seeing these children from age one. Uh, and I, I think with our clothes, uh, we can start this project in the future. And that's part of our uh, kind of awareness every year. And hopefully in the future with a newer generation, we're able to do it. Uh, Dr. Jehan, our next uh, distinguished speaker is Dr. Jehan Turkistani. Uh, she's consultant pediatric dentist at the National Guard Health Affairs. Uh, Dr. Jehan, as part of her much involvement in the pediatric dentistry field, Clinically and administratively, she organizes many workshops in hematology oncology and participated in establishing the dental service for pediatric bone marrow and blood uh, oncology and bone marrow transplant patients at Princess Noura Oncology Center. Uh, please uh, join me to uh, welcome her uh, and uh, give her the talk from the dentist's point of view. Thank you. Assalamu yeah, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, thank you, Dr. Adikra, for your nice introduction. Kul uh, amantu bkhair. Ramadan kareem alaikum jami'an. Allah yadgabbal da'atana wa da'atakum. Thank you, Dr. Arwa, for your uh, valuable uh, presentation and information. Every time we uh, listen to your uh, presentation, uh, as if we are uh, hearing new information uh, uh, and valuable information. Okay, uh, today uh, I will share uh, uh, the topic of uh, bleeding disorders by talking about uh, dental consideration in the management of patients with uh, bleeding disorders. I will be discussing uh, uh, two cases, two case scenarios, and uh, uh, we'll see together how the information we got from Dr. Arwa's uh, lecture uh, or presentation, uh, how it's going to be applied on the, on the cases. So as I said, we'll have two cases for discussion, and then uh, we'll be having uh, some uh, questions and answers. Okay, the first case will be uh, about this child, five years old uh, boy. Uh, he had a fall from the stairs. كل الأولاد والأطفال الأيام هذه مشغولين بالأيباد والجوالات والشغلات دي. This boy had a fall from the stairs. We, as a result of this fall, he had a swelling of the right shoulder and the upper arm. And also he had some uh, bleeding from the mouth. So uh, he has been taken to the ER uh, in the hospital and he had an examination. Uh, it was found that he has a uh, hematoma. Dr. Jahan, Dr. Jahan, we cannot see your screen. Uh, I don't see it. So I don't know what happened. You must have gone out. Try to see what the sharing screen. And then come back again. Yeah. Check. Yes, now we see it, but before we didn't. Now it's now it's, now it's Type. Okay, so this boy uh, fall off the stairs, and then he was taken to the hospital ER. Uh, upon examination, uh, there was a hematoma of the right shoulder, and also uh, he had trauma to the upper uh, anterior teeth. <clears throat> uh, the medical history for uh, this patient, he had no previous uh, history of surgeries or traumas or medication, but the mother mentioned that uh, the boy's cousin had a similar uh, bleeding problem uh, in terms of uh, 
uh, bruises or hematomas. So investigation was done for this child. Oh, and, uh, can you, Dr. Jehan, I think the screen is not uh, moving. It was moving the first time. Oh. So just check maybe it's to do with the share screen. And then... Uh, now? Click next. Perfect. about the patient investigation. Are you with the same level as us? Yes, yes. Investigation yes. coagulation profile. This is the hospital emergency yeah. and then investigation. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. As we can see, uh, his lab results uh, came out showing the hemoglobin level of nine. Uh, hematocrit is uh, 26%. Uh, platelets count uh, 200,000. Uh, regarding the coagulation profile, uh, the prothrombin time is 12, 12, 12 seconds. Uh, the activated prothrombin time is uh, 60 seconds and the thrombin time is 11. Uh, uh, after he received the management regarding uh, his uh, bruises and uh, uh, hematomas, he, he, he was referred for a dental consultation. On examination, uh, the upper uh, primary central incisors were severely uh, extruded and also there was mobility as we can see in the picture uh, with also uh, uh, profuse gingival bleeding. Uh, radiographic examination uh, shows that uh, the teeth are displaced with the widened uh, PDL space. So the first question will be does the lab data support the diagnosis of a bleeding disorder I will uh, uh, show you the lab results again. And uh, supposed to be there is a, a, a poll for this question. Yeah. So does the lab, uh, the lab data support the diagnosis of bleeding disorder, yes or no? Okay, excellent. So we got 77% uh, uh, answers of yes, which is uh, uh, the right answer. Uh, as we can see from the lab results, there is uh, uh, the, the activated prothrombin time is 60 seconds, which is uh, prolonged. So this indicates that there is a problem in the intrinsic uh, pathway as Dr. Arwa explained. Type. So uh, the next question will be uh, what type of bleeding disorder does the test show? So there is a problem and I, now I want you to tell you uh, to tell me which type of bleeding disorder. Is it vessel defects? or platelet disorders or factor deficiencies or other disorders. You will be having one minute to uh, tell me your answers. Okay, so 63% for factor deficiencies, uh, which is the right answer. Uh, as I told you before and explained ex massively by Dr. Arwa that uh, whenever there is a, a problem in the, in the laboratory results, especially with the uh, prothrombin uh, time, the activated prothrombin time, so there will there will be a, a defect in the in the coagulation uh, pathway, the, especially in this case the intrinsic pathway, because we have a, a elongated or prolonged uh, uh, activated prothrombin time. 
so as we can see, uh, the platelets level were normal, the prothrombin time normal, the thrombin time is normal, and the PTT is prolonged. So once we see a prolonged PTT, it means there is a factor deficiency, and specifically the intrinsic pathway uh, defect. It could be a defect in factor 8 or 9 or uh, 11 or 12. Uh, uh, and uh, also it means that there is a normal common pathway. Uh, we need to do further investigation to know which type or which factor is uh, really uh, deficient. Uh, and this uh, figure, I took it from Dr. Arwa's uh, presentation. Uh, as we can see, uh, I remind you again that this is the intrinsic pathway, this is the extrinsic, and any a defect in one of the factors here, factor 8 or 9 or 11 or 12, it will show us in the laboratory result as a prolonged uh, PTT. Okay, so our next question, what confirmatory tests should be done uh, to know uh, which type of, uh, of factor deficiency? We, uh, which one of the four types of uh, factors are uh, defective. So is it uh, PFA100 uh, mixing study factor assay or inhibitors? Excellent answer, mashallah. It means that you are uh, you are concentrating with Dr. Arwa, and of course, Dr. Arwa is a great speaker, and she covered the topic uh, really nice. So, factor essay is the right answer. Excellent. Uh, so, in order to know which type of uh, or which one of the factors is uh, affecting in uh, in this uh, in this scenario. Uh, we did the factor assay, and it turns out to be that factor uh, eight activity was, uh, uh, sorry, it's supposed to be here more than five. So it's a uh, moderate, uh, no, no, less than five, less than 5%. So it's a moderate. If it's more than 5%, it will be mild hemophilia, but uh, his, his uh, factor eight activity is uh, less than five or between one and five percent, so it's a uh, moderate hemophilia. So uh, I put these uh, again to remind you that uh, if the factor is uh, less than uh, one percent, it will be a severe hemophilia. From one to five is moderate, and if it's mild, it will be more than five percent. So for this case, his uh, lab results turns out to be uh, less than 5%, which means uh, moderate hemophilia. So uh, our next question will be, uh, what will be the dental management for this case or for this scenario? Uh, select one or more of the following. Uh, should we give him uh, desmos desmopressin or uh, factor VIII replacement, uh, or uh, anti-fibrinolytic therapy, or teeth extraction. You can select more than one answer. Um, okay, I have uh, different answers here. Uh, let's go by them one by one. Uh, this mobresin is the uh, is the treatment that we use uh, for mild cases of hemophilia. Uh, it will make a transient increase in the factor level, uh, and uh, uh, it will be needed for only mild cases. Uh, uh, but for our case, 
Usually, in general, the dental management or the management of patients with bleeding disorder depends on the severity of the condition and how uh, invasive the dental procedure uh, is. Uh, so for our case, uh, we agreed that his case is moderate because the factor level was uh, less than 5%. So in this case, we will not be using the, uh, the desmopressin. Uh, we will uh, we will need to have uh, a factor eight replacement, and options for factor eight re replacement uh, could be factor eight concent uh, concentrates or recombinant factor eight or fresh frozen plasma and cryoprecipitate. So the first line of management is not this uh, this more present. It's a factor eight replacement. Uh, regarding the antifibrinolytic uh, anti therapy, also we need it. It can be used post-operatively uh, to protect uh, the, the formation of the blood clot. Uh, and it's uh, usually in the form of uh, transamic acid, uh, oral prints. And of course, uh, the dental management will be extraction for the upper central incisors. So the dental management for this case will be uh, uh, the three answers starting from uh, a replacement of factor eight and then uh, extraction of the upper central incisors and then uh, postoperatively uh, we'll be applying the antifibrinolytic therapy to protect the formation of the blood clot. Uh, uh, and this will be the management for this case. So uh, the last question, what are the dental consideration for management with patients with bleeding disorder? Um, uh, yani, what are the precautions that we have to be taken into consideration while treating patients with uh, hemophilia? Uh, regarding the nerve block, anesthetic injection uh, are indicated or infiltration and intra-ligamentary anesthesia are indicated. Uh, saliva ejectors and high-speed uh, suction are safe to use. Uh, or aspirin and uh, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may interfere with hemostasis. So which one of these considerations is the correct one? Mm -hmm. So, uh, right answers, mashallah. So, infiltration and intra uh, ligamentary anesthesia are indicated. This is the right answer. Uh, of course, nerve block uh, are not uh, indicated. Actually, they are contraindicated, except if there is a, a good coverage with factor eight. But usually, uh, as Dr. Arwa said, it's more safe to do infiltration and interligamentary anesthesia. And usually, most of these uh, children are uh, treated under uh, general anesthesia. So uh, we were not we are not using blocks uh, that much. Uh, regarding this case specifically, it's the um, extraction of upper anterior teeth. So we'll be using infiltration only. No need for nerve block. So nerve block is contraindicated in this case. Uh, saliva ejectors and high speed uh, suctions are safe to use. Uh, uh, actually, they are not safe to use because um, uh, uh, they might cause injury to the floor of the mouth and uh, might cause hematoma and ecchymosis. Mm -hmm. So it has to be used with caution and with careful. Uh, regarding the, um, the last option, which is, um, which uh, it was what, the last option? Yeah, aspirin and uh, non-steroidal may not interfere with hemostasis. Taban, this is a wrong statement. They usually interfere with uh, hemostasis. So uh, for this question, the right answer is mm -hmm. B, 
uh, infiltration and uh, interligamentary anesthesia are indicated in this case. Okay, as we said in general, nerve locks, uh, anesthetic injections are uh, contraindicated, uh, except if the patient was well covered with uh, factor uh, replacement and he was hospitalized and under monitoring and uh, uh, under care for uh, supervision with the, uh, by the hem uh, hematologist. Anesthetic uh, infiltration are safer to use, uh, like the, uh, uh, as well as the interligamentary anesthesia. And of course, the, the anesthesia that we will be using uh, is with vasoconstrictor. Uh, regarding, uh, uh, I will continue talking about some general consideration for uh, treating patients with uh, hemophilia. Uh, uh, local uh, hemostatic uh, measures or agents and techniques are very important, like uh, placing some pressure packs or surgical packs, or sometimes we might need sutures or surgical stents. And of course, as we mentioned before, the anti-fibrinolytic mouthwash or uh, transamic acid mouthwash. Uh, another general consideration is the use of rubber dam. It's preferred to use a rubber dam uh, because it will help to protect the tissues and the soft tissue from the uh, cutting instrument, from the sharp instrument. So it's better to do our procedure uh, by using the rubber dam. And uh, we mentioned about saliva ejector and the high-speed suction. It has to be used with care and uh, precaution. Sometimes we might uh, need to rest the, the saliva ejector or the high-speed uh, under uh, or above uh, cotton rolls in order to protect the floor of the mouth from getting injured and uh, uh, preventing the development of hematoma or ecchymosis. Uh, also, another general consideration, the endodontic therapy is preferred over extraction uh, for hemophilia cases. And as we discussed before, uh, the aspirin and the non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory drug are uh, not a great choice for uh, pain control because they will interfere with hemostasis. So we will shift to the uh, acetaminophen uh, option. So this is the end of the first case. If you have any questions or if Dr. Arwa wants to add, add any comments. Uh, if there is no any question, I will move to the second case. Uh, okay. The second case scenario uh, will be about a nine years old female patient. Uh, she has been sent to the dental uh, clinic for evaluation for uh, dental rehabilitation under general anesthesia due to behavioral problems and extensive uh, dental work. Uh, she had a history of several uh, nose bleeds, which needed cautery. And also she had a family history of uh, uh, having her older brother uh, blood transfusion following appendicectomy. And uh, her mother also, she experienced long uh, menstrual periods. On examination of this uh, girl, uh, she looks pale and there was a large bruises in her extremities. Uh, of course, the oral examination showed extensive carious teeth, which needed multiple extractions and restorations. Uh, so the patient was referred to the general pediatric clinic for further investigation because of the uh, findings from the history and from the examination. So the lab investigation showed, uh, as we can see, hemoglobin is 8, hematocrit 27%. The platelet counts is 250,000. Uh, regarding the coagulation profile, its uh, prothrombin time is 11 seconds. 
the activated uh, prothrombin time is 29, the thrombin time is 12. Uh, so, from this uh, lab results, uh, what is the likely abnormality for this case? She has a, a, a physical uh, symptom, she has a family history, but the lab results uh, shows what? Which type of abnormality? Is it vessel defect, platelet disorders, factor deficiency, or other disorders? Mm, we have a lot of uh, variety of answers, but the correct one is the platelet disorders. So, uh, platelet disorders, because from the history, we can see uh, that uh, there is a nasal bleeding, there is bruises in her arm, she looks pale, also there is a family history from the brother and from the mother, so uh, the lab results are normal. Uh, the bleeding, uh, sorry, the prothrombin time is normal. The thrombin time, the APTT is normal. Uh, but there is physical or and family history uh, indicating that she has some bleeding problems or bleeding disorders. So this leads us to the next question. What are further tests required that will make us sure of our diagnosis. Is it uh, really platelet disorder or not? What we will be asking for? The platelet function uh, test or the mixing study, uh, platelet aggregation test or inhibitors. <clears throat> type. Uh, actually, uh, uh, there is um, a typo error in this question from me. I'm sorry. Uh, the platelet function uh, test and the platelet aggregation test are the same. So whoever answered A or C, they are correct. So, uh, mashallah, from uh, you are a good listener to Dr. Arwa. I am very happy that you answered right. So the further investigation that we will be doing to uh, make sure from our diagnosis is the platelet function test or platelet aggregation test uh, to find out the, plate, the, the platelet uh, dysfunction. Uh, okay, so the next question will be, what is the most likely diagnosis if the patient uh, if the patient has a defective platelet aggregation. The lab results turns out to be uh, abnormal for the platelet function test. So what will be the most likely diagnosis? Is it hypersplenism or Glanzmann's uh, thrombasthenia, immune uh, thrombocytopenia, uh, purpura, uh, or von Willebrand disease? So what do you think uh, the right answer would be? Um, actually, the right answer is um, uh, Glanzmann uh, thrombasthenia. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's not the immune thrombocytopenia purpura. Uh, Glanzmann uh, thrombasthenia is an autosomal recessive disorder. It causes a uh, defect in uh, platelet aggregation. Uh, so this was the diagnosis of uh, our, uh, our case. Can the patient uh, go safely to the, to the surgery, to the dental rehabilitation under general anesthesia? 
the options will be yes after platelet transfusion or no the surgery is contraindicated in her case Um, excellent, mashallah, 97%, yes. So for those cases of Glanzman uh, thrombasthenia, uh, they can go for surgery if they receive the proper uh, platelet transfusion, and there will be uh, no problem uh, in this case. And uh, in general, we always uh, say that uh, the management of patients with bleeding disorder depends on the uh, on the severity of the condition uh, of the patient and how invasive is the procedure and all the time we have to consult the physician he has to be uh, supporting our back uh, during uh, the journey of our treatment so uh, a proper consultation with a physician is a must the last question for this case will be what are the common oral findings for patients with uh, bleeding disorders? Is it uh, dry mouth, petechia, decomosis, uh, teeth mobility, or opportunistic infection? Okay, great. 94% is uh, petechia and ecomosis. Uh, of course, dry mouth is not an option, neither teeth mobility or opportunistic infection. I think this was an easy question. Uh, so, uh, common oral findings also, in addition to petechia and ecomosis, is uh, gingival bleeding or gingival enlargement. Uh, also, uh, because of the ignorance of oral hygiene and uh, some of the patients are afraid of the oral bleeding they are uh, uh, doing uh, or they're ignoring their oral hygiene or doing it uh, ineffectively. So this will lead to other problems like dental caries and periodontal disease. So the percentage of uh, so, or we can say they are a uh, higher risk for dental caries and uh, periodontal disease. So these will be the common findings for those patients. And uh, by this, we are reaching our, uh, the last question in our second case. Uh, if you have any ca uh, questions regarding the two cases, or uh, if Dr. Arwa wants to join for uh, discussion, هيا كلا دكتورة جيهان thank you so much أنا بصراحة أول شيء أبغى أشكر جميع الحضور إنه مبيض وجهي مع دكتورة أيوة. جيهان <تصفيق> وأن المحاضرة كانت إن شاء الله يعني متواصلة مع بعض thank you so much لجميع الحضور thank you so much لدكتورة جيهان uh, I think most of the uh, يعني areas uh, have been covered in this lecture and thank you very much as usual, our great dentists, fast, uh, they grasped the, uh, the lecture and the uh, items uh, that they needed to know. If you're in doubt, consult the hematology. Uh, don't take the risk, just consult, feel safe, and uh, talk to whom is involved in the patient care initially. If you're in doubt, always. Alf shukur lakum jamiyan. Uh, shukra lakhi, uh, shukra lakhi, and thank you for the idea for, for giving me this opportunity to share. Thank you, Dr. Manal al Dr. Zikra. Thank you, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, shukran jazeelan, Dr. Jehan, uh, for a very informative 
nicely done going through from beginning to end to all the cases thank you so much one more question and then we just please leave uh, wait with us just a few minutes a uh, question mm -hmm. was raised uh, for both of you or for dr jihan is uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs not preferable for patient on anticoagulants yeah it's not preferable yeah, because preferable. it will affect uh, the function of the, uh, the coagulation path so the formation of the clotting it's neat. Uh, yeah, and it's not preferable. We have to look for other choices like acetaminophen. It will interfere with the function of the coagulation pathway and the clotting uh, pathway. Mm -hmm. Uh, as explained also by Dr. Asma, that uh, the non-steroidal uh, 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 temporary transient uh, effect uh, in contrast to the aspirin, uh, it makes a permanent or uh, a definitive effect uh, regarding the coagulation. So although it's uh, temporary, but we don't prefer to use it. Uh, we are uh, going to be a safer choice of us. Okay, uh, so everybody, uh, with this said and done, thank you so much, everybody. And we would like to present you, uh, before we present anybody, I would like to thank uh, the Saudi Society of Pediatric Industry, but in specific, Dr. Manal uh, Malik, and Dr. Imad Badawi, who always uh, uh, bring out uh, very scientific uh, information and, and a very good presentation. And of course, uh, Dr. Arim, all the technical support and all the uh, being on time and all her, uh, we would like to thank her on behalf of, the, at least on behalf of the speakers. Uh, for, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Arwa, and we are happy to present you on behalf of the Saudi Society of Pediatric Dentistry an appreciation just to say uh, thank you for being a hematologist and thank you for our support. شكرا جزيل لكم وشكرا لهذه الاستضافة من جميع السعودية لطب أسنان الأطفال الذين غريبة عليها تماما شكرا دكتور عماد دكتورة ذكرى دكتورة جيهان دكتورة ريم دكتورة منال للجميع وشكرا لمن خلف الكواليس يعني شكرا جزيلا وشكرا للجمهور للحضور في رمضان في هذا الوقت شكرا لكم الله يجزيكم الخير وإن شاء الله يكون علم نافع ألف شكرا لكم and the next uh, certificate for Dr. Jihan uh, Turkistani. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. and information good cases. Thank you. Uh, today marks a very nice uh, day for, um, for, for us because to me, this is an important subject. We deal with it every day. I just want to add more important subject that when you deal with these patients, use common sense. Yes, there are a lot of uh, theoretical information, but if you're going to do a simple uh, restoration on a child in a mild, moderate, severe, just simple common sense, pressure, and uh, you have to be careful. I mean, if you're going to do prophylaxis, not the same as extraction. Uh, when you do a block, there are alternatives like uh, infiltration uh, with an RTK. So there are a lot of factors involved uh, in dealing with that. And the most important is preventive uh, thinking. Uh, these patients, should, you should, uh, associate, uh, wherever you are, associate with a hematologist. And you should start seeing the patient as age one, like we were uh, taught and we teach you, is dental home. Uh, starting to see this patient at uh, one year is very important to reduce the the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the or problems related to oral disease. Thank you very much. And uh, for this, if there are any more comments, I would like to thank everybody and thank you for attending. And thank you for those people who attended and used the evening for knowledge. Thank you on behalf of every patient because you're trying to gain knowledge. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Adikra, Dr. Manal, Dr. Imad, Dr. Reem, Dr. Arwa. Everybody, thank you for the presentation and the answers 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 and the answers. السلام عليكم الجميع سيدعمكم الله السلام عليكم <تصفيق>